Hi guys and welcome back. This is part 10 of my Unreal Engine 4 multiplayer FPS course. If you guys haven't checked out the previous parts, make sure you guys do. Links to those will be down in the video description. Also down there will be a link to join my Discord server. So if you guys have any questions or suggestion, make sure you guys do join the server. And yeah guys, most of you guys who are watching my videos aren't actually subscribed. So make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon. So you won't miss any future videos. So let's get started. In this part, we'll uh, actually continue with the database functionality. Now we'll just set up a couple of things in order to run queries from our computer. So first of all, head into blueprint class, right click, go to blueprint class and create an object. Select that and we'll just call this one database helper. Open it up. Now inside the database helper object, we will be setting up the functions and uh, the other things which we require to actually run queries on our database. Alright guys, so the first function that we will need is a function to actually connect to our database and retrieve the connection object. So for that, head into functions and add a new one and call this one connect to database, database underscore internal. The reason we are calling it internal is because we don't want to call this function from outside and just to prevent that from accidentally happening, change the access specifier to private. So you won't be able to call this from outside. Now drag off of this and call mysql connect. So you should find this macro here and in here you need to fill the details which you got from clevercloud.com in the admin section of mysql what the details which I blurred in the previous video. So you need to fill in those details in these blanks. Now head into your event graph or actually you could do it right here. Add an event dispatcher and call this one on connection complete. So this is going to handle the event. So once the connection is either a success or a fail, once we get the result, we are going to call on connection complete and we can use the parameters to get hold of the connection object as well as perform some other operations. You will understand what I'm saying once we actually use it. So add in an input and this one is going to be a MySQL connection object. Just call this one connection and we need another input and let's call this one successful going to be of type boolean and add in another input called error message error and this is going to be of type string so that's all we really need for connection to be honest so drag off of this and just click on call and for the connection object let's have a variable as well so we can use it a bit later use this variable and pass it again into connection and since it is a success, check success. And for the error, let's say, let's just put OK. And if that's not the case, the connection object is going to be null. And successful is going to be false. And the error is going to be the error message. So that's pretty much it. And we could just have a return node just to, just for us to understand the flow of the program. Compile that. And under your event graph, right click and create a new custom event. And we are going to be calling this one connect to database. Now inside here, when we actually connect to database, we want to call this function asynchronously. So the way we'll do that is using our async func by func name function, which we got from the async func caller plugin. Target is going to be self because we are in the same object and the function name is going to be the one we just created and we don't require any of the on complete stuff. So that's pretty much it for connecting to the database. Okay guys, so the next thing that we need is actually a function to close the connection. So this one is going to be called close connection underscore internal. Now again, this one is going to be private in terms of the access specifier. Now, just one thing to note, uh, if the close connection fails, there's uh, nothing you can really do about it. So we won't have any event dispatchers 
all we will do is or actually let's actually have an event dispatcher but we can't really do anything if the closing of the connection fails so on on connection closed that's what it's going to be called and over here we want to close the connection so there should be a close connection macro I believe my sql close so drag off of this and the connection is going to be the connection object itself and if it is successful then that's great call the event dispatcher and if it does show an error there's really nothing much you can do about it so just call on connection closed again just add in the return node again so just drag in return and add in the return node Alright, now head back into your event graph and just create a custom event again and call this one close connection. And this one is going to be calling the function asynchronously again. This time it is going to be close connection underscore internal. So that's about it for closing the connection. Okay guys, so the next function that we need is a function to actually find some players in the database. So just go ahead and create a custom event and we'll call this one find players in database. Now the thing that's different about this one compared to the others is that this one in fact actually has something that we need to return. So the way we'll be handling this is by actually using a separate variable. So if I just drag in my SQL execute query with result you see that you get this array of structs. Now what I can do is I can promote this to a variable and I can call this one result. So this will go on success and of course we'll put this inside a function. Connection is going to be this connection object and we can pass in the query as well. So we can create a new string and call this one query. Make that a string and we can collapse this to a function plug that in as well just select all of this right click and type in collapse to function and this function is going to be called find player in database underscore internal and again uh, or actually find players because we are going to be getting multiple results and again this one's going to be private we don't want to be able to call this from anywhere else and we are going to repeat the same thing for this as well. We'll be calling this asynchronously. Copy the function name. Paste that in here. Now open it up. Now for the query, we will probably need to like pass it in from somewhere else. Now if we do not get the result, this is going to go to error. So we'll create the event dispatcher for this one as well. So on find complete or on find players complete and this one's going to be having a few inputs the first one is going to be the result so let's just see the type of this variable so it's going to be mysql connector query result row so over here mysql query result row and this one's going to be an array and the next one is going to be a boolean that is successful if it's a success we are going to return true here and this one's going to be a single variable and the next one is going to be error which is going to be a string all right so let's call it and let's just rename that actually let's call this one result and over here or rather drag on find plus complete call that drag in the result and this one's going to be successful and error is going to be okay just uh, spell that correctly and the next one is going to return an empty array so we'll just uh, make an array and then we are going to remove this pin so it's going to return a blank array and the error is going to go into the error message and we can drag in our return node here copy that and paste that in and 
put it on the error result as well now the next thing that we need to do is actually going to be running the queries so now we actually need to pass in the query now first of all we'll need our table name which you can get over here our table name is player db and if we just head into structure we can actually see the various columns in the table so drag and query just alt drag it and set that we are going to use an append to append the various uh, parameters and the command as well so it's going to be select star from player db and for the values we need the steam id so we can type in where where steam id is equal to now we will have access to all the steam IDs so we can get that as a string array and then later on just uh, combine them into one string so add in an input here and this one's going to be a string array and this one is going to be called steam IDs now we might need to create a function here so create a new function and call this one combine steam ids into single string I usually don't like to go with such long function names but this one was an exception add in an input and this one is going to be called steam ids all right guys so first of all we will need an append over here so what we can do is first of all just change this to single variable i just did that uh, during a cut so first we'll need to loop through this so oops for each loop and in this loop what we can do is we can actually combine the strings so the way we'll do that is by using an append so drag in an append here and first of all we want to add in a single quotation mark with the string close the quotation mark and add in an or and we should set uh, we should create a local variable just call this one temp and it's going to be of type string just alt track that set that to whatever we have over here all right and what we want to do is just a small condition here get the last index of this array if it's the last index we, we don't want to append or over here so we want to check if this is equal to the last index and if it is equal to the last index or we can use a select here actually so select select string so if it is equal to the last index what we want to do is we want to run a if it is not equal to the last index we want to run b which will be the append and we can drag this in and over here if it is equal to the last index we don't want to add in the or so drag in the append here put this in and add in a semicolon so drag it into a and b is going to go into the array element once the loop is completed we can drag the drag the return node to complete it and get our temp all right we can just uh, do a quick uh, test so just to test out the logic head into your level blueprint and first of all just uh, do this one modification just check if you are logged in through steam so the macro which we created and over here we can actually construct the object so construct object from class and the outer class is going to be called database helper is that what we named it whatever you have named it just put in that name all right now from the object we should be able to find the function and if we just make an array and let's just type in test and maybe test one and if we print this out what we should be getting is a combined version of it so let's actually try it out so as you see uh, only the last ones uh, coming up which means we have an error here and it's uh, very obvious on what the error is so we didn't actually append it we just overrode the string so that's why uh, it happened now we can grab in temp here 
not sure why I put it over there. A is going to go into temp and we want to append that with the further command. Alright. If you press play, you'd see that we get test or test1. And if we do combine it with our actual SQL query, so I can copy that over, paste it in. And what I can do is I can drag in an append here. I can append that along with the query or the combined string I should say. If I go ahead and press play, you see that we get the query select star from player db where stream id equal to test or test1. Now that we have confirmed that it works, we can plug this into combined string. Let's just make some space for it. And yeah guys, uh, we'll need one more function to actually proceed. So the next one is again going to be a custom event and this one is going to be called add player to database. Alright. Now uh, this function is going to be an insert statement. So we'll be using a similar kind of thing here. We won't need this function but we will use an append to actually create the query and using that we can add our player. So let's say we don't find a player in the database then we can go ahead and add it. So what you can do is grab in an append here. Append and over here we can type in our command so it's going to be insert into player db values inside the parentheses the first thing is going to be the steam id so the steam id is going to be an input so we can call this one steam id steam id so if you guys want to check out which are the columns that we have, so we have kills, deaths, wins and losses. So the first one is going to be the steam id. The next one is going to be kills. So we are going to append that with a comma. And before we actually do that, since steam id is in fact a character type. So what we can do is we can uh, add in our single quotation marks, which we need. And here is going to be the steam id close the quotation marks and add in a comma and the next one is going to be kills so that one is a number so we can add in kills so actually we don't need that since we are actually adding uh, the player so we don't actually need the number of kills it is going to be zero and the next one is going to be zero and the next one is going to be zero as well and the last one is going to be zero we can close that and we can end that with a semicolon. Alright, so this should in theory give us the query. Now what we can do is we can call the function asynchronously. The way we'll do that is using start async func by func name. And over here this one is going to be the query actually. Whatever we appended will be the query that we'll run. Or I should rather say command. So let me just rename that. Since it's not just select that we are doing. So, so this is going to be the command. And let's create another function. And this one is going to be called add player to database underscore internal. And this one is going to be private again. And over here we can grab in the command and we can type in my SQL execute query. We do not need a result for it. We have the connection object already. And the command is going to be the one which we put here. And if it is a success, well and good. If it's not a success, there's really not much you can do. So we can just pass it on through our event dispatcher. So we can call this one on add player complete and for the inputs just add one called successful and add another string and call this one error we can call this now and for the error we can pass in the error message so let's just rename that actually 
this one is going to be called error so let's just uh, refresh all nodes call that on success error is going to be ok and it's going to be successful can get a return node and if there is an error successful is going to be false and the error is going into the error message alright and we can drag the return node in again so yeah guys we might need one more function actually that is to update the player database or update the entry so that will be something which we will finish the video with so that will be the last thing that we'll do now head back into your event graph and make sure you have everything set up correctly create another custom event and this one is going to be called update player in database now this function in particular will only be called on the server so when we actually play the game your players aren't going to be calling it so at the end of the match whatever number of kills or deaths or whatever is there on the server those are the stats that will be added so the video is getting very lengthy so i figured we shall actually continue this in the next part so yeah guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching if you guys did learn something new make sure you guys do leave a sub and as well as like the video and make sure you guys do join my discord server for any questions or suggestions link is down in the video description below and i'll see you guys next time goodbye